Quest. I thought it would be interesting to take uh, these three videos where I'm starting to go beyond public speaking, communication beyond public speaking, and I thought it would be interesting to shoot them in my home. Uh, these three videos, these, these first three, are going to deal with communication and relationships. And since they deal with communication and relationships, I thought, why not focus on home, where I am? So that's what I tried to do here. See, when we talk about communication and relationships, we're talking about how we as human beings come together and come apart. And one of the uh, important theories that we deal with in understanding how we come together and come apart is Knapp's relational development model. So he said that relationships tend to go in these stages. That we start out by experimenting. We start out by just talking to people and, and excuse me, we start out by initiating. We start out by talking to people. If you don't talk to somebody, you don't have a relationship with them. And he said that we we start out talking to people, and the reason that we talk to people is because we have an attraction. Now that attraction doesn't necessarily have to be like a sexual attraction. You might be attracted to somebody because your teacher puts you together in a group. You're put together in a group, and your attraction is you both want to get the project done. Then they move on to the experimenting stage. And in the experimenting stage, what happens is you begin to experiment. You throw things out there and see how somebody reacts. I might mention that I have my I have my dog and somebody might say, well, oh really, She's uh, that's really neat. I have a dog too. What's your dog? What kind of dog is she? Or they might say, oh, I hate dogs. Dogs are awful. Dogs are terrible. And uh, if that's the case, I'll know what kind of relationship I can develop with them. Sometimes, after the experimenting goes well, and a relationship begins to intensify. Uh, when a relationship starts to intensify, uh, that means that you're just talking to each other all the time. The intensifying stage of the relationship is one of the best stages of the relationship. Because at that stage, at that intensifying stage of the relationship, it feels like everything is so wonderful. You, t you, you talk to them. It's one of those stages where, you know, you start out and you meet and you're having a conversation at around six. Next thing you know, you look down at your phone and, oh my gosh, it's 3.30 in the morning. We've been staying up all this time. That's the, that's the end. And then you go home, you go to bed, you sleep for three hours, you wake up and you think, oh, I better text them. That's the intensifying stage when there is a great deal of what we call mutual, uh, mutual disclosure. The one party discloses and the other party discloses, and it just feels like you're getting to know each other so well. After the intensifying stage begins the integrating stage. And I often like to joke that it's your friends who notice that you're at the integrating stage before you do. See, they notice it and they say, well, uh, where's so-and-so? And you know what? You know the answer. Why do you know the answer? Because you are integrated. Then comes the bonding stage. The more formal the bonding, the more difficult it will be for the relationship to terminate if you come to that stage. So the bonding stage could be marriage, could be engagement, could be moving in together, could be starting a business together. There's all kinds of things that, they, that happen at the bonding stage, but no matter what it is, they make it formal. And that's what makes it the bonding stage. According to Knapp's relationship development model, immediately after the bonding stage begin the coming apart stages. And this starts out with differentiating. See, in the bonding stage and, and even in the integrating stage, you're more you're constantly saying, well, what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours, it's all one, it's all the same. Then the differentiating saying, yeah, what's yours is mine, but that's mine. That's not yours. That's the, that's the differentiating stage. When you start to say that, well, yeah, we, we, we want to spend most of our time together, but Thursday night, you know, I, I kind of want that time for myself. 
Eventually, the, the differentiating continues to the point of what we call circumscribing. And at the circumscribing stage, the relationship continues and develops, and it circ you start to circumscribe. And you start to say, well, this is mine, that's yours, and, you know, what's mine is mine, and what's yours is yours, and we're just going to circumscribe the differences between these. After the circumscribing stage, you reach a point where you've pretty much decided on whose is what, and you reach the stagnating stage. In the stagnating stage, you've pretty much already decided which arguments you're going to have, and you have those same arguments all the time, and you're pretty much comfortable. And honestly, the stagnate stage of stagnation is one of the most comfortable stages in a relationship. It's that stage when really you aren't fighting anymore because things just seem to be comfortable. Now I want you to remember that because we're going to talk about the stagnating stage later. Some people start to get bored at the stagnating stage and they start to avoid the other person. Avoiding is the next stage in a relationship. You know you're at that stage, your cell phone rings, you look and see what the name is, and you put it back in your pocket. That's the avoiding stage of your relationship. And the next stage is the terminating stage. That's the final stage in Knapp's relationship development model, and that means the relationship has terminated. It has ended. And like I said before when I talked about bonding, the more formal the bond was, the more difficult the termination. But not all relationships really need to terminate. See, some relationships can reach that stagnating level, and sometimes people can maintain the relationship at the stagnating level. If that happens, then the stagnating relationship eventually goes back to the intensifying stage. Why? Because you're maintaining the relationship. And eventually somebody says something that sparks a conversation again. When you go back to the intensifying level, you're going to reintegrate, and then you're going to bond again. But when you bond again, the relationship is going to be a different kind of relationship than that which you've began. I'm going to talk to have two more videos about relationships, but this was a good introduction. It kind of talks about Knapp's relationship development model. Integrating, experimenting, intensifying, uh, excuse me, initiating, experimenting, intensifying, integrating, bonding, differentiating, circumscribing, stagnating, avoiding, and finally terminating. So I hope you'll continue to watch these videos now that we're moving beyond public speaking but continuing the rhetorical quest.